Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to our uh, apologetic series uh, that we are going through here to refute the Islamic claim that the Quran has scientific miracles in it so that it justifies its divine origin. And uh, with me here is Dr. Jay Smith, who's been uh, doing a, an amazing job, of course, uh, to work with me in terms of uh, uh, you know, criticizing uh, uh, those claims, uh, refuting them, debunking them, but also we've been looking at the Arabic of the verses in the Quran and what the commentators periodically are saying about it. And we are also showing that there are additional scientific errors in these very passages that our Muslim friends are trying to use. Today we're going to talk about one of those hot ones called the embryonic uh, uh, d development, basically. Uh, it's in, so basically it's embryology right now. We're dealing with that kind of, uh, you know, uh, topics in the Quran and our Muslim friends uh, use this a lot, by the way, to try to show that somehow God, through an illiterate prophet 14 centuries ago, described the stages the embryo will go through. And how did he know this since he wasn't a physician or a doctor or anything like that? And with that says, I'm going to turn it over to you, Dr. Smith to analyze this argument. Okay, this is a, uh, you're right, this is one of their biggest ones. This is the one that Morris Bukai spent so much time right. uh, trying to underline, and many have got run with it. You will find this come up in chat shows, you'll find this come up on the internet, you will certainly see this uh, when you're on the ground and you talk to Muslims. This is probably the first one they always bring up, so we're keeping it to last. That's why we end, are ending with this one as far as, as uh, time for proofs. And the, to go to understand this, you need to go to Surah 23. In chapter 23, verse 13 and 14. And let me go ahead and read it, and I'm, I'm going to inter. I'll ask you then to define these Absolutely. words as we go through it. Uh, Thereafter, we made him as a nutfa, uh, in a safe lodging. So, what is nutfa as far as you're concerned? And that, that's the uh, the, the sperm, you know. Uh, okay. And so I, there's a sperm. That's right. All right. That's observable, right? Yeah. If you're male, it's right. quite observable, okay? And I think even some commentators have said both male and female, uh, basically sperm. I mean, they, they, they kind of invented a new idea. Okay, all right, yeah. let's continue yeah. on. Verse 14. Then we made the nutfa, which is a sperm, into a clot, which would be the alaka. alaka. Okay, that's right. And what does alaka mean to you? Uh, it will be a, a blood clot, you know. And uh, by the way, here, I just want to say something and you can elaborate later. When you say blood clots, we're talking about a dead tissue, dead stuff, not something that is live. So something that you would see in a miscarriage. Right. Do miscarriages happen all the time? No. No, they don't, but they do happen. They do happen, All over course. the world, we've had miscarriages. Right. I mean, I you mean like, do they happen? Yes, periodically, absolutely. I meant like you th I thought you saying every time there is a... It's quite normal you know, to have a absolutely, miscarriage. Absolutely. They're very yeah. normal, is what I mean. I should have said that. They happen all over the world That's all right. the time. So right. this is something you could yes. observe. And have you ever seen a miscarriage? Have you, seen, or you probably haven't seen, but have you seen a picture of a miscarriage? I've seen. I've seen. Do before. they not look like clotted blood? They do. Exactly. The very thing that's here. So alaka would be something that's quite observable. Right. And it happens all over the world. It's happened in my own family. And I haven't had it in my, with my wife and I, but we've had cousins who have had miscarriages. I have been with people who, who are going through miscarriages. I have seen with my own eyes a result of a miscarriage, and it's exactly what I would assume alaka is. Okay? So right. that's not a miracle, again, all right? That's right. That's not a miracle. And then it goes on, and these we made the clot. So it's even saying clot here. We made this clot, this alaka, into a... Nutfa uh, or mudga. mudda. Sorry, mudga. That's right. So, what is the mudda? Mudga is here. It means like a lump of meat. I mean, it's like here's what happened when I, when I chew on meat. Uh, you, you use the word mabaga. You know, you you're chewing. You know, so it does look like something that you can chew on. It's 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 meat, basic piece of meat that is dangling maybe or or something. Uh, uh, an outgrowth or, or or some of that nature. You know, it looks like muscle mass. You know. Or, so it's quite observable. You know, exactly. And anybody that's a doctor, anybody that's an embryologist uh, would suggest that that's what the, this is referring to. And then it goes on to, we made out of that little lump of flesh bones, and then we clothed the bones with flesh. And that's where the uh, another problem here. Okay. We're, and before we get to that problem, 
that's the, some say it's four, some say it's five stages. Well, the sperm is the first, or the zygote, some people call it, and then you have the alaka, which is the which you, uh, which is a clot, blood right. clot. And then you go to the the flesh or the chewed the chewed flesh, the lump, and then you go to the bones, and then you go to the flesh that is right. uh, that uh, bones clothed by the flesh. So that's the outer flesh that we have, the muscles and things like that. Um, there is a problem here, but before we get to the problem. There are quite a few people that uh, that would talk about the stages of embryology prior to the Quran. Am I correct? Right. Hippocrates talked about it. That's correct. Aristotle talked about it. I think Aristotle had 15 stages in his stage, and they were writing in the fourth and third century, third and fourth century BC. Right. Long, 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 exactly. long before. Sorry, this is right. Long, long before the right. Quran ever talked about it. But probably the person we need to go to is actually a fellow named Galen. Are you familiar that's, with that that's name? That's right. Galen is the one who developed those stages. And where did he live? Um, if my memory served me right, it was somewhere in either Egypt or the Levant area. Actually, further to the east. He lived in Stesiphon. Stesiphon. So, Persia. Which is today Baghdad. That's right. Where Baghdad is today. Yeah, okay. And where that, that is the archaic name. And that, he was a Jewish embryologist. He lived in 150 AD, so he lived in the second century. Galen was, a, uh, was well known yeah, and in I his writings. And I think where I got Egypt is like there was a university supposedly in there that so, teaches. But I, they would have yeah. been teaching this in Egypt as well. Right. So that, yeah. Yeah. listen, this was known, yeah. no, if this was, he was writing this in the second century, this was then disseminated right across the known world at that time. Even those who put the Quran together would have had access to this Absolutely. material. Absolutely. It was well known that Galen was considered to be the authority on the embryolog embryology, and he had four stages. The yeah. exact same four stages that we have just read. Correct. But he talked. He didn't talk about the sperm so much because sperm is so uh, is, is really not really a stage of embryology. It's what creates and starts the embryo. But he talked about the zygote, which then became the chewed uh, uh, the chewed meat, which then became the bones that were clothed with flesh. Right, and there have been many. Uh, this Doctor Cook that the Muslims like to use to say, "Ah, see, he got it. He t said that this is correct." And they they went and brought this guy and had him from Canada, and they had him go all over the Muslim world to show that the Quran is correct. He has got it corrected. This is as embryologists. This is what we believe today. Right. We tried to phone him up, and he went. He answered the phone. His wife had us him get off the phone because he does not know. He no longer wants to go public with what he said earlier, uh, because other embryologists have held him to boot. Mm -hmm. The reason why is what you're going to tell me next, and that is that Galen made a mistake, didn't he? Well, Galen probably went by what he can observe, okay. not what he understands. And what, where is the error in this four stages? Well, I mean, one, like number four, for instance, the idea that bones first and then uh, muscle mass. There it is, right there. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I, I've been, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the uh, uh, ultrasound room, and I've seen my kids, and I can tell you, I didn't see skeletons. <laughs> I saw beans, you know, in there. The two, yeah. they actually form simultaneously, don't you? That's right. You don't have bones forming suddenly, and then the, suddenly this thing is wrapped around it. It's just, it's That's just right. like a, that. That no embryologist would agree with that. Galen may not have may, may, may not have even wanted to say that. The thing is, it's obvious they've taken Galen's writings, they took it wholesale and incorporated it into chapter 23, verse 13 and 14. Right. Along with the error that Galen made, that error is now found in the Quran. Correct. So this is not a miracle, is it? That's right. I mean, if you are, if the God of Islam didn't know uh, that there is an error here and reported it accurately according to someone, a human, a doctor of those days, who, by the way, he did his best. I mean, he doesn't know the creation and the stages. That's what he assumed. Yeah. yeah. If the God of Islam, the all-knowing God, didn't know that, then shame on him. Yeah. And here's a man in the second century. Now, be careful. I have to be careful because some have pointed out that uh, the, the Gaden was also well known in Pergamon. And some say that he could be that he also practiced in Pergamon, which is in Turkey. But certainly it's not. It's that part of the world where these would have been sent down, disseminated into the that whole Middle Eastern area. Egypt, they would have yep. known about this. They would have known as far away as what is Tehran today. Uh, and th because of the fact that it was so well known, that was ex it would make sense that, that it got incorporated into the Quran. But brother, I mean, let's take um, Galen out of it, okay? Let's take Aristotle um, and anyone out of it. Yeah. Just today, modern science have shot this claim down. Just today. 
don't our Muslim friends jump all over today's discoveries to yeah. tell us? Yeah. Well, today, science discovered that this is wrong. That's right. So what do we do with that? Well, I, obviously, I would like to ask a Muslim, what are they going to do with that? Because right. if God, who creates everything, if God really is the creator, don't you think he would have known how to how an embryology, uh, embryo forms? Wouldn't he have known that one does not pre- precede the other? The fact that it was not it was observed by Galen or others is superfluous. You're right, because what the real question is, we've got a problem. The God, this Absolutely. God, would not make an error like that if he was a real God. Absolutely. And that's why I always make sure that Allah has a God with a small G. Amen. No God that I know, not the God of this book, would make that kind of that kind of error. Amen, brother. Okay. Amen. Terrific stuff. Thanks for thanks for bringing Absolutely. me on for this. Well, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. As you can see, we are doing our best here to try to be as professionally as possible in critiquing these things, supported by evidence. We're not just uh, being emotional in our argument, by the way. We're trying to be uh, scientific, <laughs> if you wish, uh, when it comes to those arguments. So hopefully you can benefit from these tools, use them in your own ministry. And if you're a Muslim, please reach out to us with your comments and your observations. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you all richly. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ.